skydiving fails. How did Joan Murray survive a two and a half mile fall and a sudden stop with the ground? Stay tuned to find out. Hey everybody, Dr. Chris, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician. Welcome to my channel, your number one source for information on orthopedic injuries and broken bones that's easy to understand for the everyday human being. That's a little doctor joke we like to make around here. Before we get started, if you want to know more about me and my life as an orthopedic surgeon, be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Stable Knees. I'll leave a link down below. So who the heck is Joan Murray? and how did she manage to pull this feat off anyway? Joan Murray was the 47-year-old mother of two twin girls. She was a mother who worked at the bank during the week and who was an avid skydiver on the weekends. She was a moderately experienced skydiver, having completed 35 dives, most of which were solo dives. She experienced a severe trauma on September 25th of 1999 that changed her life forever. And to be honest, it really even just defies logic that she managed to survive this at all. So what exactly happened to Joan Murray? On the date of her injury, Joan traveled to Chester, South Carolina to prepare for her 36th dive. She prepared her gear like normal and she boarded the plane like normal. There was nothing that was out of the ordinary. At the appropriate time, at an altitude of 14,500 feet, Joan jumped out of the plane like normal. After a free fall of suitable duration, Joan pulled the cord to release her main chute. Except that nothing happened. She continued to fall. Joan started to spin out of control, but fortunately she was able to cut away her main chute. She remained calm and cool-headed and pulled the cord on her reserve chute. Fortunately, it opened, just like it was supposed to. However, at this point, Joan was still spinning wildly and she was unable to reorient herself. And although her backup chute was inflated, it became tangled as she continued to spin wildly. She continued to fall towards the ground at speed. And at this point, she had already fallen more than two miles. Two miles towards the ground from a height of 14,500 feet. That's far and probably very fast. During this time, her reserve chute, although tangled, had remained inflated. However, at a height of approximately 700 feet, her reserve chute completely failed. So Joan free fell from a height of 700 feet towards the ground. And she struck the ground with a speed of approximately 80 miles per hour, which is the speed of approximately 128 kilometers per hour for all of you who know the metric system. It's faster than the speed that you travel on the highway. That's the speed at which she hit the ground. Somehow, Joan managed to survive her impact with the ground and she even managed to remain conscious. Frankly, I find this almost unbelievable that she could strike the ground at this type of speed and not only remain alive, but remain conscious. Keep in mind that the LD50, or the height from which the mortality is approximately 50%, is 48 feet. And typically, those who fall from a height of 80 feet have almost a 100% chance of dying. So the fact that she fell from 14,500 feet and free fell from a height of 700 feet is absolutely astounding. And although Joan was conscious after the moment of impact, she was breathless and she was unable to move. She laid there in the middle of the field thinking that she was alone. Then the ground beneath her began to move and she felt a sudden, hot, burning sensation in her back. This was followed in quick succession by a second sting, and then another, and then another, and then many more. Each of these stings was more painful than the last, and eventually the pain became too much for her to bear and she passed out. When paramedics arrived on the scene, Joan was unconscious, but she was covered by hundreds and thousands of fire ants. That's right, fire ants. So if you were wondering about how to make free falling from a height of 700 feet and landing on the ground with a speed of over 80 miles an hour worse, 
the answer would be to fall onto a mound of fire ants. That would be the correct answer. And that's exactly what Joan Murray did. Joan was rushed by the paramedics to the Carolinas Medical Center with extensive injuries to the right hand side of her body and over 200 fire ant bites. She was stabilized on arrival at the hospital and she underwent a number of emergency surgical procedures. She remained in a coma for approximately two weeks, but she was alive. She had survived falling from 14,500 feet. Interestingly enough, Joan had been kept alive by the repeated fire ant stings, which kept her heart beating long enough in order for her to be transported to the hospital where she could be definitively stabilized. The injuries that Joan suffered to her pelvis and to her right side extremities were temporarily stabilized with external fixators. Eventually, Joan underwent 20 reconstructive procedures and 17 blood transfusions before she was ultimately stabilized. She suffered a comminuted pelvic fracture, a comminuted femur fracture, and had several teeth and fillings that were knocked out of her skull. And I find it amazing that she did not suffer any significant hollow viscous injuries to the organs within her thoracoabdominal cavity or any closed head injuries. And hollow viscous just refers to those organs that are not solid in nature, but have a cavity within them. Ultimately, Joan's femur was stabilized with intramedullary rod fixation. And this just means that they put a titanium rod down the middle of the shaft of her femur. The anatomy of the femur was reconstructed around the rod and then the rod was secured at both the top and the bottom by transfixion screws. Likewise, her pelvic fracture was stabilized with an open reduction and internal fixation using plate and screw fixation. And this just means that through an open incision, the pelvic bones were visualized and then placed back into position before being stabilized with plates and screws. So now that you've heard this incredible tale, I know that you're asking the question, how did she survive this? First, Joan landed on a fire ant mound. And here, the mound was softer than the surrounding earth. If you look at the way that the mound is constructed, although it is a solid structure on the outside, there are a number of tunnels for the ant within. Consequently, there is space within the mound that allows it to collapse and absorb impact. Fortunately for Joan, she fell directly on the mound and this cushioned her fall when she struck the ground. Second, the fire ant bites, although painful and irritating, they stimulated Joan's heart and allowed it to keep beating as a result of the adrenaline or epinephrine response. Fire ants are listed among the top 10 insects with the most painful stings. Fire ant stings have a Schmidt sting pain index score of 1.2. I'm not really sure what that means, but I, I think that it means that it's really painful. But suffice it to say that the stings were sufficiently painful to allow Joan's neuroendocrine system or her hormonal system to release a significant amount of adrenaline or epinephrine, the chemical that is used to stimulate your body during the fight or flight response. And basically, this is what kept Joan alive long enough for her to make it to the hospital. Number three, Joan underwent stabilization of her extensive pelvic and right-sided extremity fractures, which limited ongoing hemorrhage and allowed doctors to stabilize her condition. This allowed the physicians to stop her hemorrhagic shock and to avoid DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulopathy. A hemorrhagic shock is just the condition that describes the dysfunction of multiple body organs as a result of extensive blood loss and lowered intravascular blood volume. DIC is a condition that follows shortly thereafter where all of the clotting factors from your blood have been depleted and your body loses its ability to create clots. And if it can't create clots, it can't stop bleeding. And if you can't stop bleeding and you have lots of wounds, that's a problem. Ultimately, Joan received 17 transfusions of blood, 17 units of blood. That's approximately 
four and a half liters of blood, which is really almost her entire blood volume. So she was transfused almost her entire blood volume. Not all at once, of course, but nevertheless, she was transfused a lot. After numerous surgeries and an extended stay in the hospital, Joan began an extensive rehabilitation which continued for more than two years. After two years rehabilitating, Joan was able to return to work at the bank. And shortly thereafter, she returned to skydiving to make her 37th jump. And you know what? It was freaking successful. So tell me, would you jump again after you had suffered this type of injury? So there you have it. Today we've been talking about an astounding skydiving fail. More specifically, how Joan Murray survived a two and a half mile drop onto the ground and managed to survive. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, that's the word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho. Just a flesh wound.